Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Talking Point. My name is Faraz Patel. Jazakallah so much for staying with us. Now, in the last few months, we have seen the government of national unity take full effect. And for the first time in a democratic South Africa, more than five parties are now formed part of this uh, government of national unity. And it's, of course, featured various parties from various political spheres across the country. So my interview today is going to be with Al-Jama leader Khaniv Hendricks. And of course, they joined as one of the parties within the government of national unity. He occupies the de social development deputy minister position, of course. He is the deputy to uh, the current ANC Women's League president and the minister of social development, CCC Dolashe. The discussion, of course, focused around the work that he's going to be doing within uh, social development. Also, what are they trying to do to help those who are recipients of SASA, various other grants, also to try and go ahead and tackle extortion gangs who are, of course, targeting these social development agencies. I'm also going to be talking to him about you know, Al Jama, how did the decision come for them to join this government of national unity? And we'll close off the discussion talking about the mayors that, of course, served within the city of Johannesburg, whether it was a failure or whether it was a success. The question I am going to be asking Minister or Deputy Minister Khaniv Hendricks is just how important the position of social development is. Mr. Hendricks, with all that said, do will Al Jama still hold fellow parties within the government of national unity accountable? I ask this because obviously the ANC still has a quote unquote lion's share of ministers within the cabinet. Uh, I know Al Jama has always held the Democratic Alliance accountable and also in Qatar Freedom Party accountable for, of course, its stance on uh, Palestine. So will Al Jama still be holding these parties accountable even if you are in a coalition or government of national unity with these fellow uh, with these fellow parties yeah look i've already told you that mm -hmm. we stayed decided to stay on because most of our work will be related to the national mm -hmm. development plan and my department also has certain goals to achieve mm -hmm. which we can talk about later on uh, the president gave us guidance with regard to the question that you raised. He indicated that when it, that uh, that he would not like cabinet ministers on cabinet decisions uh, to fight uh, in the public media, mm -hmm. because he indicated that before the cabinet uh, makes a decision, there is an opportunity in a cabinet cluster to raise your concerns. So, so that means that uh, by the, if the cabinet makes a decision, there would have been a sufficient consensus with that particular position. But he, then he also said it doesn't uh, mean that uh, everything else will stay the same. Mm. So uh, parliament ministers uh, often give positions or statements in Parliament and then there's a debate. So yesterday there was a debate on extortion. Yes, yeah, of course. So our representative advocate Jamim Masali had some strong uh, positions as far as that is concerned. Uh, and um, so these debates take place at least every second week. And then in the portfolio committees, and she serves on sports, mm -hmm. and she serves on another committee. Uh, that's where we have six or seven political parties together, and we try and reach uh, consensus. But if the consensus doesn't meet our policies, then uh, we will vote against it. And if there's a uh, opportunity to debate it in Parliament, uh, we we, uh, we will then uh, put our position very strongly. Mm -hmm. So nothing has changed except mm -hmm. that uh, there is an agreement between cabinet ministers and deputies in view of the fact that we've had a bite at the cherry mm -hmm. twice. 
uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, in public uh, try and uh, let's say criticize another cabinet minister because it's not his decision, it's a cabinet mm -hmm. decision. It's a decision of the president where he consulted widely in two forums before arriving at a position. Mr. Hendricks, um, of course, you have uh, Sisi Tolashe as your minister you know, working beside you. You talk of consensus. How important is that consensus going to be in, you know, it really is a fragile department like social development with so many, you know, elements with regards to that. How important is consensus with Minister Tolashe in making sure that this, this specific department and ministry runs effectively? Look, yesterday she cleared the air mm. and uh, we had on the left hand side of the table, we had the uh, political appointees of Al Zabar, mm. which were handpicked by the party. And on the right hand, we had her political appointees handpicked by her party or herself. And she made it clear that I'm not her deputy. Mm that I've been appointed by the president and I report to the president. Mm. So uh, we are expecting a visit from the president as soon as he comes from China. Mm. So we, both of us are on standby to sign our KPAs. Mm. So the president will give, uh, give me, we'll sign a contract of what he expects me to do and herself. So each one, of us, each one of us with our uh, political advisors, and I have 10 of them, mm. uh, most of them from the party, uh, we will try and now carry out our mandate and get the director general to get his staff to do the implementation because we don't do the implementation. We develop the policies we give the orders and the directives and we do oversight. And the president, for example, in the last parliament, there were six outstanding matters for our department. And at the first cabinet meeting, he raised concerns that there are no members to say what progress has been made or which projects has been completed. And he said in future, he's not going to hold officials mm. to account. He's going to hold ministers and deputy ministers to account. And he wants to tell us there will be consequences. Mm. And he says he also expects us to, that there should be consequences for officials mm -hmm. who are supposed to implement the cabinet uh, policy decisions. So reaching consensus, um, between myself and the minister, I think we're going to get on very well if there are issues that we disagreed on and we disagreed on one so far. Mm. There was a court order and also an instruction from cabinet mm. that half of the NPOs must be closed down mm. because they're non-compliant. After three years, they don't send their financials mm. and they don't submit their plan for the following year or their proposed plan. So out of the 300,000, 150,000 will be closed down. And I've already received a lot of the inquiries from mosques and madrasas mm. and other organizations, churches and drug rehabs uh, for uh, advice. So I told the minister that please, you know, don't close it down because all she's gonna do is sign the document in front of her, and I saw the document. And my comment was to give me a chance to assist those NPO, uh, NPOs to become compliant. Mm -hmm. And I'll even ask my party to assist by providing a team of accountants to assist them free of charge. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hendricks, I have to stop you there because we have to go to a break. Uh, after the break, are we going to be touching on the department uh, Mr. Hendricks is, of course, the Deputy Minister of, and that is social development. Many challenges that arise within that department, especially when it comes to grants, SASA, uh, you know, welfare of citizens. We'll, after the break, we will be touching on that discussion. Do stay tuned to Talking Point.
Welcome back to Talking Point. I'm in conversation with the Social Development Deputy Minister, Hanif Hendricks. Uh, Mr. Hendricks, social development, I think when you look at the poverty levels within South Africa, uh, it becomes such an important department, really, for so many people. And we've seen with Sasa the corruption that has happened. We've seen really maladministration occurring with regards to the payments to people who really do deserve it. How does the seventh administration shape up in not only changing that narrative, but making sure that those people who are deserved of these payments and grants get what they deserve? Look, uh, the minister and myself talked about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. We have three agencies. We've got the uh, Sasa, they have a budget of 25 billion rand. We have the National Development Agency, they were a smaller budget. Uh, we have the drug unit, and we have a number of other agencies and units, but top of mind mm. is obviously Sasa. Yes. So we have uh, met with Sasa, uh, we met with all their staff and my first message to the staff was that there is a payday for pensioners mm. and unless everyone has been paid, you shouldn't go to sleep yes. until, you say, until you've heard that everyone has been paid. So we then had a meeting with the Sasa executives and the minister and myself made it clear that we're not happy with their performance. Mm. We may close it down and put something else in place. It's as drastic as that. Mm. However, the minister has also identified many areas where Sasa has done well in terms of recommendations by the Auditor General and the Cabinet. So we have decided that the way we're going to deal with Sasa is the month of October is, uh, is the, is, they call it um, Department of Social Development Month. So on that month, we're going to unleash all the Sasa officials into different communities. And we want to hear from the communities whether they are happy or not happy with Sasa. Mm. So from that particular engagement, the minister said that she's going to make a recommendation, which means we're either going to strengthen Sasa or we're going to put something else in its place. Because at the moment, she is not very happy with the fact that Sasa has closed down the post offices and then post-bank, there are problems, and that Sasa has created pay points, which is up to 50 kilometers away from where people used to get their grant. But how do you ensure, uh, Mr. Hendricks, from the ministry and the department that corruption does not creep in? When you listen to the citizens of the sixth administration, even the fifth administration, their, their gripe was they arrive at the offices, there's no assistance, number one, but the people that are working in those various offices have really showed signs of maladministration. And I think we've seen various agencies which work with government, that maladministration occurring. Members of that very same organizations that are either accused or have been found guilty of corruption. So how do you as the deputy minister, along with Minister Tolashe say, putting a foot down and that the seventh administration can now work for the citizens. How do, how, how, how do you do that as Deputy Minister Hendricks? Look, we've, we now have our political staff. Mm. We never had staff or tools of trade, uh, so we've got no excuse. Mm. So we have decided to put them on a red carpet in the next seven days and then uh, uh, deal with the issues that we've addressed. I already told you when we had the orientation, normally when you have orientation, you are very nice. Mm. 
And they even had photographs of myself and the minister on the walls, like they have the photographs mm. of the president and the deputy president. But um, the minister, her parting words, which I supported even more strongly than her, was that the persons in charge of Sasa Grants are heartless. Mm. Mm. And she said it in front of them, not behind their backs. And she, and she wanted to know from the CEO, how can you have such people in your department? And by the way, uh, you just have a contract for another year. So I have to wait until September before we're going to make changes. Mm. So we come in, we, we have the CEO of SASA as a contract until uh, September next year. But uh, we are going to be very uh, vigilant about SASA. Uh, we are going to depend on the feedback from the people in the seventh administration on the ground, what they feel about SASA. And if we have to replace SASA, its management, its officials, then uh, the procedures must kick in. Mm. There's already uh, a number of Sasa people that are either in court or disciplinary hearings, which we've inherited. We still don't know mm. uh, who they are and how many. And uh, we hope to get that at, uh, at the next meeting. But um, we are aware of the problems you spoke about because the minister said that when she went on campaigning, mm. people told her, we're not going to vote for you because of the of Sasha. Mm. And she is the Women's League president. so As well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, so, that may so, have hit hard also. So, so people asked her, you give us 2,200 mm. and then we have to spend 70 rand on traveling. And sometimes we have to walk one or two kilometers because there's no transport and we are mugged. So she said that, you know, she got a lot of flack during her campaigning amongst the Women's League, yes, and obviously, you know, they campaigned all mm. over the country. And uh, she's going to take the gripes of the people, of the pensioners, very seriously. Mm. And similarly, myself, I will support the minister. And we're not going to take any prisoners. Mm. Mr. Hendricks, extortion. Um, if extortion were to happen anywhere, it would happen amongst the vulnerable communities. Uh, we heard Minister Senzo Kunu yesterday mentioning about the challenge law enforcement is going to have in dealing with extortion. And I'd like to think that extortion doesn't only exist in communities where there's well but more the communities where there's less of wealth where there are poor backgrounds or poor communities where extortion is rife and of course social development's going to be one of those where extortion gangs are going to take advantage what's the plan of the department and you and minister Tolashe in trying to assist law enforcement agencies in dealing with extortion, given that these are the places, SASA officers, NDAs, where they could be going ahead and really making quite a big operation there? Uh, look, I'm sure many of them are trying to build fortunes. Mm. And um, it is now up to the communities mm. to come to take to their life opportunities to raise all these uh, allegations. We want to hear it from the communities. Mm. We don't want to hear it from other officials who want to replace those who want to make fortunes and make fortunes themselves. Sure. So there's a whole full month where we will be involved in engaging communities all over the country. My political team, the minister's political team, all the senior officials. There will be 200 of us that will be very active on the ground every day in all communities, in all 42 districts and nine provinces. So if communities are not going to come forward 
and put the issues that you raise mm. and the media raises on the table, then cowboys don't cry mm. because we want to hear from them. We want the media to be very active and take part in, uh, in the social development month and also join us as we go from one community to another community and then on the side, raise the questions you've raised mm. and get the answers on the record so that we can deal with it. And you have a minister and a deputy minister that is very passionate about rooting it out. And as you know, the minister has got a woman's leak behind her. Mm. Myself, we've got Elza Mark constituency behind us that will also assist us because that is their responsibility. And that's why we have a national parliamentary constituency office in Lanasia where we have a very senior active person that's going to parliament next year, but has a job of, of identifying these issues and throwing their weight behind the social welfare department. You can't uh, expect me to be deputy minister and I don't have support of the Muslim community mm -hmm. in the first place because I think the president gave the post to me because he knows that the community uh, where uh, poverty, eradication is, comes naturally to them, they pay the car, mm. they're very charitable, uh, uh, and that, that community will most probably throw their weight behind me and the ministry. So we achieved the goal of the National Development Plan to eradicate poverty by 2030. Mm. So, so my head is on the block and the minister to ensure that climate uh, and the executive achieve uh, its, uh, its goal to eradicate poverty by 2030, and we just have six years left. Mm. Mr. Hendricks, after the break, I'm going to ask you, I see you got a hat on, but I'm assuming that is also the hat of Al Jama because we are going to be talking Al Jama for the next uh, two segments. Do stay tuned to Talking Point. Uh, we're going to be getting from Mr. Hendricks why Al Jama had made a decision to join the government of a national unity. Do stay tuned to Talking Point. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back to Talking Point. I'm in conversation with uh, Ghanif Hendricks. Now, Ghanif Hend uh, Mr. Hendricks, uh, we are now going to be referring to you as the Al Jamaa leader. So it's... You stole the social development deputy minister, but for the next two segments, we are going to be discussing the party. Now, Mr. Hendricks and I had you uh, in the early days of June. Uh, I know you were saying that, look, it's, it's a 50-50 in joining this government of national unity. Uh, I then remember a few days later, you were in that progressive caucus press conference uh, with the, 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 the parties that are representative of them. And then a few days later, of course, uh, you announced that you are joining the government of national unity. What changed in that 48 to 72 hours? Yeah, look, as you know that the EFF came to visit mm. me at my office in Howard Center in Pinelands. And uh, Professor Harun my CEO, told them, look, there are progressive parties. Why don't you get all of us together? Mm. And then Julius Malema was found and he said, yeah, let's form a progressive caucus. Mm. So between myself and Julius Malema, we coined the name. Mm. So when we met, uh, we put a very strong position that the parties of the progressive caucus, which was UDM, EFF, al ATM, one or two others. MK Party. MK Party, yeah. No, not no, MK at Party. At the time they weren't. No, there wasn't an okay. MK yeah. party. So Are you talking this is before the seventh administration was formed? Yes, okay. there was no right. okay. they, they were talking part about of before? the progress. Right. Okay, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So although at the meeting Julius Ramalema said that he's got a mandate to speak on behalf mm. of the MK party. He'll bring okay. them on board. All right. So they wanted to know what is Al Zama's recommendation on the way forward? because all the parties by then have mm. been approached to join the government of national unity. And we were worried that it was a coalition between the DA and the ANC and not a real mm. government of national unity. And they're trying to dupe us into joining a 
coalition between the ANC and the DA. So Altamar's position was, on the eve of the election of a speaker and then the president, yes. that uh, we should throw our weight behind the ANC and tell them that we will vote for them and put in place a minority government with the support of smaller parties, including the EFF and others, and Malema said he'll even bring the MK party along. So I told them the reason is, otherwise the ANC will get too cozy with the DA. So the Progressive Caucus will throw their weight behind the ANC. So I asked Malema a direct question. Now, now that we've agreed on this, mm. will you nominate Cyril Ramaphosa as president? He said, yes. If that is the instruction I'm getting from a progressive caucus, I will carry it out. Mm -hmm. Because our party also believes that a party with the most seats or votes should uh, constitute the administration. So this was only if <coughs> the ANC was going to take the minority government? Yes. Okay. Right. Then there was uncertainty on whether the ANC is going to go with a, an alliance with the DA. Because as you know, Alan Jella claims that she made up her mind 10 minutes before the uh, vote for a speaker, mm. that it was negotiations right up to the loss. So uh, we didn't tell the EFF that they shouldn't put up a candidate for deputy speaker or speaker. It was only the presidency. Mm. So the, when we left, uh, the agreement was that uh, we will throw our weight behind the ANC and form a minority government. But in the meantime, there were one-on-one -on -one meetings between the ANC and all of us, including al -Zama. In mm -hmm. our case, they were desperate to get us on board because they wanted the Muslim community mm -hmm. on board. So other parties didn't have the kind of engagement we had so we met with the, with the Atulia House people, we met with the NEC, we met with the National Working Committee, and we even met with the presidency. Each one of us wanting to know why we feel a, a minority government supported by other parties is better than a government of national unity. Mm. So they put the case very strongly. So we raise issues of Palestine, mm. We raised other issues, the gains of the 30 years that uh, the liberation movement has mm. achieved. And they gave the assurance that nothing will change. And the silver bullet was when they told me, now judge us with regard to our position on a national development plan. Do you have any quarrels with a national development plan? Mm. I said, no, no, we are there, we support it. We want to achieve the goals because this is an international obligation. Many countries sign on to having a national development plan and achieving goals by 2030. So uh, I had a phone call from uh, 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 David Masura, who was in charge of everything, of everyone, with regard to this. And he told me, Hanif, you know, we really want Al Jamaa to join. I said, but. You know, uh, we are so worried that you're going to have a coalition between the DA and the ANC. Because Helen Ziller's words pointed towards that, and, and it uh, reverberated weeks after that, if I stand to be corrected, where she was talking about the government of national unity, and many people interpreted it as the DA calling the shots. Well, was that something even post when you, of course, were elected? Uh, you know, elected the Deputy Minister of Social Development, was it something al Jamal was worried about that these words of Helen Zilla were going to be a concern given that this government of national unity was going to be overtaken by one party? Yes, we were concerned mm -hmm. and that's why one hour before the deadline, apparently the presidency gave a deadline mm -hmm. on who's on board and who's not on board. And the presidency wanted to see the contracts mm -hmm party to party. It wasn't one contract where everyone signed. It was party to party contracts. So he sent me the contract and he said, please sign it. Mm. And we made a joke about it and he said, you know, we won't sign it. He said, well, we have to submit in an hour's time. 
And um, so I said, look, uh, you're making a special effort by sending me the document. Mm. Secondly, you're taking me into your confidence that there's an hour left. It is not, uh, you know, you're not holding a gun to my head. You're just being, mm. you just want us to be on board. Mm. So I phoned uh, EFF and I said, guys, are you in and out? Are mm. you with the government, uh, you know, the, of uh, national unity or a minority government? They said, we're still monitoring. Then I heard from my contacts in the ANC that the EFF wanted certain positions and it was up to the president to decide. But the president said that I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to give any guarantees. When I make my decision, it will be independent. Mm. I won't be influenced by anyone, but I've and listened to everyone. And it is his at the end of the day. Sorry? It's the president's prerogative at the yes. end of the day. Yeah. So the EFF says, no, we want it in writing mm. from the president that we will get the following positions. So we thought that the EFF will join mm. and they'll bring MK on board. Mm. So that went through my mind because I'm now a leader. Mm. I've got to take leadership. Yes. I don't have time to consult my party members. They have been thoroughly consulted. They gave me all the issues. I now have to exercise my discretion as a leader of the party. So now I look at it and I see, okay, so that means we are now stuck with the ACDP and with Action SA and everyone else is with the government of national unity. So that was my conclusion. Mm. So look, I was wrong yeah, yeah. in that the EFF and uh, yeah. MK is still yeah. not part. So I then signed a letter, sent it off, mm. and David Makura then phoned me back. And he says, you know, I feel like a child, that, and this is his Iraq words, mm. where, where I, where Father Christmas brought me a present. Mm. Because we were told by the president and everyone else, mm. get out of on board. And I'm so happy I've carried out my mandate. Mm. Thank you very much. Mr. Alex, I, I've got 30 seconds. Um, uh, on Monday, uh, Fikile Ambalula said the government of national unity thinks could change. Uh, I, I think he was referring to potentially questions from the SECP about this being, quote unquote, a neoliberal sort of coalition. In 30 seconds, uh, uh, is the SECP wrong about labeling this a neoliberal supposed organization? In 30 seconds. Yeah, look, he, I spoke to him about it mm -hmm. and he said that's Alan Zilla's nonsense. Mm -hmm. Don't believe Alan Zilla. Mm. And the media is pushing that narrative. Mm. Uh, we are strong on the Constitution. Mm. We are strong on the Bill of Rights. Mm. And we are strong on the National Development Plan. Mm. Uh, nothing else is going to happen for the next three years. Mm -hmm. After the break, I wrap up my conversation with... Uh, Mr. Geneve Hendricks. So we're going to be talking about the city of Johannesburg. Of course, you do know two Aljama mayors uh, served in uh, the mayoral positions in one of Africa's most industrialized cities. We're going to be discussing that after the break. Welcome back to Talking Point. Now, as recent as a few weeks ago, uh, Cabello Guamanda had resigned from his position as the city of Johannesburg mayor. This was, of course, a planned push of uh, no confidence against him by the ANC and Action SA. Mr. Hendricks, um, does Ultima feel disappointed at the way things have gone, not only for Cabello Guamanda, but previously for Tapelo Amat, that these mayors had not fulfilled the terms. Yes, we are because we feel that both of them were doing an excellent job in their own way. And we feel that the new mayor is mm. going to mess up the city of Joburg and undo all the good work that has been done, which is two clean audits, uh, no findings in key areas, three power stations commissioned, the next one in El Dorado Park, uh, you know, on the radar. Uh, that uh, we achieved uh, 100 of the IDP projects. So as you know that the mayor's hands are tied. His work is done by other MECs from nine political mm. parties. So he's just got to keep everyone under control and keep the coalition together. So uh, 
when it comes to uh, extraordinary monies, there's no such thing. If a matter hasn't been approved in terms of the IDP process, and there's no line item and no budget, there's nothing that the mayor or the mm. president or anyone else can do. The community can say, look, we need to fix that swimming pool and go crazy about it, but he can't do anything about it because he's got to wait for the next IDP project. So he was uh, uh, basically keeping the, the fort for 16 months, which is a major achievement. And the mayor before him, his job was to go in and clean up the mess by appointing 130 people permanent. Mm. They were all uh, appointed by the DA, Action SA, ANC in temporary capacities. And myself, I have the same problem now in the ministry that we have mm. too many acting positions. And uh, we've already advertised 100 positions to make people permanent. So our mayor did the same. He then uh, got a lot of flack uh, and uh, we, he then decided that he's not going to harm the coalition if parties like Gayton McKenzie's party were against him and he rallied another party and it will collapse the coalition and the DA will control, he'll step down for the sake of the coalition. Knowing well that I've got an agreement with the presidency, with Latula House, mm. Uh, with the big guns in the ANC uh, that we will take the lead in Joburg. So if he goes, either I take over or I appoint someone from the party. So, so Al Jama is willing to, of course, work with Dada Morero. Well, we we uh, we uh, we have decided to seeing that the ANC came up with a good argument. They mm. said, look, there's elections coming, and. Um, the majority of the voters of Joburg voted for us. Mm. They expect us to be the mayor. We couldn't take up the position because uh, the EFF was against it. Uh, the community was quite happy that Al Jama helped us, which mm. we did. Thank you very much. Uh, but now before the election in 226, mm. they want to see, see us holding the mayoral seat. So uh, we then had a meeting at midnight. I summoned the ANC to the hotel and the mayor, mm. and I had them talk it out. Mm. And the mayor said, look, uh, wherever Al Jamar deploys him, he's prepared to go. Mm. So we asked him, would he be prepared to take up a position of MMC on mm. the committee? He said, wherever, fine, mm. or I'll just be an ordinary so counselor. So there's no hard feelings? No hard feelings, and mm. when he said that, mm. Uh, you know, Dada Marere came over, started crying, mm. and it was like a happy reunion. And uh, we, the mayor said, I'll prepare my resignation letter. Mm. You want the deadline of Friday because the presidency wanted the matter to be sorted on yes. Friday. And my president wants to assist the president of the country. So I will do everything that's necessary. Mm. So we were supposed to have a joint press conference to announce all of this. They renegated on that. They didn't have the joint press conference. They went on to have their own press conference to say how well the ANC did for the past 16 months mm. while there was an Al Jamaa mayor. Mm. So we let it ride. And when I met uh, 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 the premier at the cabinet, Lakhotla, he came and he said, please, please come and hug me because others the media say we are estranged. And he came to hug mm. me and so he says, now the media knows we are still friends. Mm. So they did us a dirty and they'll have to pay for it. You say pay for it? Yes. Uh, so so, if, so if, if, if city of Johannesburg, when the voters decide in the 2026 local government elections and Al Jamaa is going to be the kingpin or yes for that mayoral position and is ANC, Aljama, need ANC needs it so you're not you're telling me now Al Jamaa is not giving it no we will uh, put very strict conditions mm. this time the last time it was but a you just handshake said they, they, they would do you dirt, it, they it was you a handshake yeah and I'll show you how why we mm. will we will take we will for example we're contesting against the ANC in Lanasia mm. we're going to beat them we're going to beat the ANC 
wherever we also have a constituency. Mm -hmm. We are not going to be soft on the ANC. We will take every seat away from the ANC where we have a strong constituency. Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll continue that with the DA and the other parties. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to by-elections, when it comes to the elections, mm -hmm. There's no favors between us and the ANC. Mm. We're, going to, we're going to not take revenge, mm. but we're going to show the ANC that the people of Joburg prefers al Jamaat to them. Mm. Mr. Hendricks, uh, I, I want to touch on the 200 Rand surcharge on electricity. So when we spoke to the citizen, uh, some of the citizens of Johannesburg, many of them, of course, take it to social media, that was the one thing that they were quite upset Can about. Can I address that? that? Yeah, no, wait, hold on. Let me finish my question, uh, Mr. Hendricks. So... Was, was uh, Mr. Guamanda's hands tied in that situation? Or did he have to do it to, fill, to, to, to assist the, 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 the city, of, uh, city power of Johannesburg's situation that it was addressing? Okay, so Herman Masaba mm. gave mm. that as one of the reasons mm. that the mayor must mm. go. Mm. So I sat with the mayor mm. until 4 o'clock in the morning mm. and we went through everything. Mm. And we discovered that the person that proposed that levy mm. was Herman Masaba when he was mayor. And then so this Co was back in 2016? Yes, and yes. then COVID okay. came and they mm. didn't implement it. Mm. So when it came to housekeeping mm. and sorting outstanding matters mm. out, mm. that was already approved by council. Mm. There was public participation. The public had no objection mm. against it because it was a directive of Salga that all municipalities must raise money mm. for infrastructure. So all the mayor had to do was, for the sake of good governance, implement something that's already been approved. So the very person that was using that against him is the person who came to council and said, look, I've got an instruction from Salga. I recommend that we impose a 200 surcharge. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, there was public participation. The report came back. There's no objections mm -hmm. to it. And uh, the mayor just had to implement it. He had no choice. Mm. So, so, so that, was a, yeah. that was a yeah. dirty pull by Herman Masaba. Mm. So it's two dirties against the party. So you won't be, obviously, if they're in a position where they need al Jaba in 2026, you can categorically state that you're going to be reassessing your relationship with them if al Jaba becomes the kingpin in that situation. No, we will always mm. uh, make sure that the Democratic Alliance doesn't run Joburg. Mm that it's not a white run, that it's not going to be a return to mm. apartheid, and that will guide us that the party that must run Joburg must have roots in the liberation movement. Mm. It won't be a return to apartheid. It will have a strong position on Palestine. And you know what I did? Mm. I forced, not forced, but I got the, uh, the general secretary of the regional committee of the ANC when they announced that al Damas agreed that Dada Moreiro become the new mayor and that we mm. will resign. He also said that we will stand with Palestine. Yeah, that's TK and Kliza, I'm assuming. So that was, yeah. his, mm. that was his concluding remark, that our position on Palestine won't change and that Israel is illegally occupying uh, Palestine. So that means our relationships with Ramallah, which is the city of Joba, guys, will be strengthened and our relationship with Hamas will also be strengthened. Mm. In fact, I'm having a Hamas office in my president office in parliament. Mm. Okay. Mr. Hendricks, I That's a revolution. Yeah, that is. No, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And that person is starting 1st of September. Okay. Well, Full time. Yeah. Okay. Advocating for Palestine. Yeah. And Kashmir. Yeah. No, of course, all the, all the areas yeah, yeah. that are under... Because current, South Africa signed yeah, the yeah. Convention Against Apartheid mm. last month yes. after seven years of prodding. Mm. They had last signed it. So we're going to implement mm. that convention by putting up uh, private members' bills, mm. outlawing organizations such as the Jewish organizations that are pushing for Israel mm. because they're pushing for apartheid and that can't be allowed. Mm. Mr. Hendricks, I have to put in this one question. Uh, uh, Tapelo Ahmed and Kabelo Guman, of course, they're seen as very, you know, the young leaders. You've got Advocate Shamima Dolly. I mean, if there are any that, are, that I am missing, please do let me know if there are any young members within Al Jama. Um, what has happened in Joburg with them not completing their terms? Has that affected them in terms of them pushing for future leadership positions within the country? Of course, 
uh, you know, there will come a time where you will be stepping down. You've mentioned that to me, that you will be stepping down from politics when the time is right. Uh, is, is the future in safe hands with these, these leaders, these young leaders? I've given you one minute just to answer that question, please. Look, uh, Cabello and Topello, mm. they, uh, they were given uh, uh, opportunities by the party mm -hmm. uh, to get experience. They've now got the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we will now reassess whether they are adding value to the party, and if they're adding to the value to the party, they will grow in the party, because remember, as mayors, they looked after themselves, mm -hmm. not after the party. They had mm -hmm. no opportunity to assist the party. None of them did every, anything for the party in their two years, mm -hmm. in, their, in their 16 months. They didn't even appoint one person from the party on their mayoral, uh, mm. um, mayoral parlour. So they did nothing for the party. Mm. They did everything for themselves from the residents of Soweto, where they come from. Now that they are freer, mm. they've got, they got to show that uh, they deserve senior positions in al and in the country. Mm. They, they now have mm. to prove themselves. They haven't proven themselves. Yeah. Mr. Hendricks, unfortunately we have come uh, to the conclusion. Shukran so much for joining us here on uh, Talking Point. We really do appreciate it. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam. It was a nice opportunity in a relaxed environment. <laughs> First time I'm here. Okay. I look forward to being here again. Inshallah. I mean, we definitely look forward to hosting you again. That is uh, Hanif Hendricks, Al Jamal leader, and of course the Deputy Minister of Social Development. That's all we have for you here on Talking Point from myself, Faraz Patel, and the rest of the team in Johannesburg. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.